Locations. Sewers of Loch Wien. For ages, humans viewed the elves as beings both beautiful and refined, as a race seemingly molded out of better clay than men. While perceiving them thus, humans also asked themselves, do elves pee? Fear wonder anymore, but if any still need tangible proof, it can be found in the sewers of Loch Muin. This colossal system of corridors and canals rouses envy in human builders. It served the city's inhabitants for long years and today has become a shelter and breeding ground for monsters. Those who do not fear beasts can use the sewers to travel discreetly between the city's quarters. Ruined Library According to legend, the library in Loch Muin had once been the richest in the world. Its, its collection of books was used by the sources, magically gifted human children sent to the city's city ages before, the, before to learn from the elves. By the time of the story, nothing but walls remained of the once great library, now completely planted and raised. Deathmold made it his quarters during the summit of mages and monarchs. Characters. Skimbold. Did I say something to do with the disappearance of Boosey? Forgive me the euphemism. Geralt discovered that Baron Kimbolt had commissioned someone to murder Falter's son. The Baron was intent on assuming the Sumerian throne, and the boy simply stood in his way. Kimbolt had planned to dispose of both Falter's bastards and became king. Had become king. His claims might have even been viewed as legitimate since he was re related to Falter's in some convoluted way. The nuances escape me, though one thing is sure. He was a very distant relative. Through Geralt's efforts, both Baron Kimbold and Count Maraval would answer for their inquisitor's intentions at the, and the parts in Boosie's disappearance in Lokmuin to di uh, ah, no. Disappearance. Full stop. However, Andronathalus lacked the manpower in Lokmuin to deal with them both. Thus, Kimbold's side was saved for the time being, while the forces he commanded eagerly assisted in Count Maraval's arrest. Maraval. One of Maraval's more daring schemes involved kidnapping Falter's children as they travelled to Loch Muin in a convoy. I should add that the Count had reached an agreement with the Nerf Guardians, promising to deliver Boosie and Anais to the Black Ones in exchange for the backing his claim to the Temerian throne. Though he wanted Temeria to be strong, he had committed treason. Carduin Carduin of Lan Exeter had once been a member of the Council of Sorcerers. During the Thanos coup, he had attempted to maintain both reason and neutrality. He certainly offered proof to, of the former when it turned out that those conspiring with Nilfgaard thought nothing of its impartiality, teleporting back to Kovia as an extremely reasonable and life-saving course of action. Their protests were for naught. Carduin and the other mages were arrested in connection with their accusations against the Lord of Sorceresses. Triss Marigold in the end, the sorceress was freed by a witcher, yet it was not Geralt. Thanks to Letho, she escaped unharmed, but I am sure she would be glad to forget the time she spent in Elfgardian captivity. Thus were the lovers reunited among the ruins of Lokmuin after their long parting, and the story of Triss Marigold's ki kidnapping ended. Vernon Roach Vernon Roach always settled his accounts. The Caduani king's pet sorcerer learned that the hard way. The Temerian captain made good on his promise and avenged the deaths of his men. Now only the question of the king's lair remained unanswered. Vernon felt the burden of great responsibility when he freed a nice level led to the, heir, the heir to the Temerian throne. He felt, however, that the kingdom's interests required him to support Jonatalis, so he t placed the girl under his care. Thus he remained loyal to the Temerian crown. Pussy Lavalette as Geralt was sailing up the pond, Abusi was packed and placed in a convoy that was to take him to Loch Muin. The boy never reached the city. The rumors Geralt had heard from King Radovid proved true. Vile intentions had bred a series of unfortunate coincidences. In short, Busi was dead. Shilad Fitz Östelen. The Nilfgaardian emissary's speech caused more confusion at the Lokmuin summit than an attack by the Emperor's imp Imperial Brigade would have. If so, in chaos was the Empire's gold and Fitz Östelen discharged his duties exquisitely. Kingslayer. I listened to the rest of the tale with bated breath. Led to the summit by Nilfgaardian envoys, Letho publicly accused the sorcerers of commissioning the assassinations of the Northern Monarchs. The Kingslayer's intricate plan was revealed too late. Letho had been working for the Nilfgaardian Empire from, from the very beginning. His mission to seed chaos before the Black Ones embarked upon a new war. Taking advantage of the ambitions of the Lord of Sorceresses, its contacts and financial means, not to mention the support of the oblivious Squirtle partisans, Letho had eliminated two of the Nordlings' most important monarchs, plundering their realms into chaos. 
On top of that, he had thrown suspicion on the sorcerers who, brought just, who were just regaining their standing. Thus was the force which had stopped Nilfgaard at sword and dealt at that was the force which had stopped Nilfgaard at sword and dealt a truly shattering blow. Now Geralt had only to confront the Kingslayer himself so that the man could confirm or deny the witch's suspicions. Only Lethe would knew the truth of the backroom intrigue which had left the North running with the blood of kings. Now I shall tell you about the final meeting and its conclusion. To Natalis. Natalis had fought many battles, but the one he fought in Fortimeria's independence at the summit in Loch Muin was surely his most challenging. With King Fortis' daughter at his, as his ward, he gained the chance to preserve the sovereignty of the state he temporarily recovered. Sheila de Tanserville. The sudden failure of the megascope would have had tragic consequences, but Geralt's heart was soft. Sheila disappeared from Loch Muin, and there was no further news of her. Hanseld. Despite his appetite for a new land, Hansel was forced to do without. The chance to snatch a part of Temeria passed right under his nose. Deathmold. Deathmold fled, unwilling to risk a clash with the Witcher. It proved a sound decision which bought him a bit more time in his life. The next meeting proved to be the last, as Deathmold died at the hands of the vengeful Roach. Geralt never revealed the details of the sorcerer's demi demise. I have concluded that it must have been quite savage, though. I would prefer to hope that Vernon's threats had been fi but figures of speech. Well, the Vernon is a brutal man, that one's for sure. Radovid. Radovid had very specific plans concerning his neighbor, the chaos riddle Temeria. He had fate, embodied by a certain witcher and a military captain, and delivered Anna Isla Valette, Foltis, the legitimate daughter, into the hands of Temeria's regent, John Natalis. Radovid would have to find some other way to expand. Expand what exactly? His dominion. Sorry.